Hi guys, today in this video we are going to discuss about nucleic acids. So throughout this video we are going to explain about the structure of nucleic acids, the functions of nucleic acids, what are purines and pyrimidines and finally the two types of nucleic acids DNA and RNA. Nucleic acids are biopolymers or large biomolecules essential to all known forms of life. The term nucleic acid is the overall name for DNA and RNA. Nucleic acids were so named because they were first found in the nucleus of the cell but they have since been discovered also to exist outside the nucleus. They are composed of nucleotides which are the monomers made up of three components a 5 carbon sugar, a phosphate group and a nitrogenous base. Without the phosphate group, the molecule is known as nucleoside. The 5 carbon sugar, also known as the ribose sugar, is a simple sugar and carbohydrate with molecular formula C5H10O5. The naturally occurring form of ribose sugar is the D-ribose which is used for coding, decoding, regulation and expression of genes. Next, the carbon number 5 in ribose sugar is attached to a phosphate group. Phosphate group is a functional group characterized by a phosphorus atom bonded to four oxygen atoms consists of three single bonds and one double bond. One of these oxygen is the one that is attached to the carbon number 5 of ribose sugar. Next, the carbon number 1 in ribose sugar is attached to a nitrogenous base. So, what is nitrogenous base? Nitrogenous base is a molecule that contains a nitrogen and has the chemical properties of a base. The nitrogenous bases in DNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. The nitrogenous base in RNA is the same with one exception which is the thymine is replaced by another nitrogenous base which is called uracil. So the nitrogenous bases are adenine, uracil, cytosine and guanine. All nucleotide synthesis requires the use of phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate which donates the ribose and phosphate necessary to create a nucleotide. With all those explanation, now we know that nucleic acid is a polynucleotide where the adjacent nucleotides are linked together by a phosphodiester bond. This covalent bond is formed between the 5' prime phosphate group of one nucleotide and the 3' prime hydroxyl group of another nucleotide. 5' prime and 3' prime is for the directionality which gives the information of the end-to-end -end chemical orientation of a single strand of nucleic acid. Hey guys, now we have learned the structure of nucleic acid but how about its function? Don't worry, I'm here to help you with this. Firstly, nucleic acid function as a storage for genetic information. Nucleic acids are created with four bases. Information is allowed to be copied because of the base pairing rules. They are copied by using one strand of nucleic acid as a template to create another. Thus, they are able to both contain and copy information. Next, nucleic acid will protect the genetic information. DNA source code is very vital to our cell, hence it must be protected from damage. In order for the cells to use the information, the information will be copied into RNA which is another type of nucleic acid. The RNA will be set out of the nucleus and around the cell to be used by cellular machinery. Hence, DNA will remain in the nucleus and protected from the chaotic environment of the cytoplasm. Lastly, nucleic acid will also direct the process of protein synthesis the protein will be synthesized by ribosomes from RNA. Now, let's take a look at purines and pyrimidines, the nitrogenous bases found in nucleic acids. Hello, this is our friend purine. A purine is a heterocyclic aromatic organic compound consisting of a 5-membered imidazole ring and a 6-membered pyrimidine ring with a molecular formula of C5H4N4. The name purine is also used for its derivatives, which include the nitrogenous bases, adenine and guanine. Purines are primarily synthesized in the liver. The end product of purine catabolism or breakdown is uric acid. So now, let's meet our other body, pyrimidine. A pyrimidine is a heterocyclic aromatic organic compound, which only consists of one ring that is six-membered and contains nitrogen. It has a molecular formula of C4H4N2. 
Like purine, the name pyrimidine is also used for its derivatives, including the nitrogenous bases cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Pyrimidines are synthesized in a variety of tissues. The catabolism of pyrimidines gives carbon dioxide and ammonia as the end products. Purines and pyrimidines make up the two groups of nitrogenous bases, which are the components of nucleotides, the building blocks of nucleic acids, DNA, and RNA. In DNA, purine adenine pairs up with pyrimidine thymine via two hydrogen bonds, while purine guanine pairs with pyrimidine cytosine via three hydrogen bonds. In RNA, pyrimidine uracil replaces thymine and pairs with adenine via two hydrogen bonds, while guanine still pairs with cytosine via three hydrogen bonds. Now that we have met our friends purine and pyrimidine, let's move on to the two types of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. DNA? What is DNA? DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, which is a molecule composed of two polynucleotides that coil around each other to form double helix structure that carrying a genetic instruction for development, functioning, growth and reproduction of unknown organism and many viruses. DNA is made up of molecules called nucleotides. Each nucleotide contains a phosphate group, a sugar group and a nitrogen base. The four types of nitrogen base are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. Those alphabets of A is for adenine, T is for thymine and G is for guanine while C for cytosine. Where the order of nitrogen base in a DNA sequence form a genes. The order of those bases is to determine DNA instruction or genetic code. Example, human DNA around 3 billion bases and more than 99% of those bases are same in all people, which according to the US National Library of Medicine. Next, nucleotide that attach together to form two long strands that spiral which create structure called double helix. If you think of double helix structure as a ladder, the four sweet group and sugar molecules will be the sides, while the bases will be the rungs. Furthermore, the bases on one strand pair with the bases on another strand where adenine will pair with thymine and guanine will pair with cytosine. So, the molecules are long, in fact that they can't fit into the cell without the right packaging. Thus, to fit inside the cell, DNA is caught tightly to form structures called chromosome, which each chromosome containing a single DNA molecule. Now you already know the structure of DNA, we're going to further understand the properties of DNA and its function. As you already know, DNA is composed of two side-by-side -side chain of nucleotide twisted into the shape of a double helix. The two nucleotide strands are held together by the interaction between pairs of bases, which the base of DNA interact according to a very straightforward rule, which is two type of base pairs A and T and G C. These two base pairs are said to be complementary, and this complementary permits error correction, copying of information, and readout of information to RNA. The association of base pair is through hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are quite weak, only about 3% of covalent bond strength. But this weakness is important to DNA molecule in hereditary. Not only that, they can be easily separated during DNA replication and transcription into RNA. Next, we move on to the backbone of each strand. is a repeating phosphate diacylable sugar polymer that called phosphodiester bonds. Its sugar phosphate backbone is said to have 5 to 3 prime polarity and understanding this polar polarity is essential in understanding how DNA fulfills its role. In the double-stranded DNA molecule, the two backbone are antiparallel. With the antiparallel orientation and rules of proper base pairing, we can determine how DNA is duplicated. Each strand serves as an ambiguous template for the synthesis of its complementary strand. For example, 
1 best sequence AAGGCDGA from 5' prime to 3' prime direction, we automatically know its complementary strand of 3 to 5' prime direction is TTCCGACT. Replication based on the simple rule, the 2 DNA strand separate and each serve as a template for a new strand. And that is the properties and function of the DNA. Hey guys. So I am here to introduce about RNA. RNA or ribonucleic acid is one of the three major biological macromolecules that are essential for life along with DNA and proteins. It acts as the intermediate between genetic information encoded by DNA and proteins which means that it plays an important role in gene expression. For your information, RNA is a single-stranded helix. The strand has a 5' end with a phosphate group and a 3' end with a hydroxyl group. It is composed of ribonucleotides. The ribonucleotides are linked together by 3' to 5' phosphodiester bonds. The nitrogenous pairs that compose ribonucleotides are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. The key difference in RNA structure is that the ribose sugar in RNA has a hydroxyl group that is absent in DNA. Next, I would like to share with you guys about the properties of RNA. So the first one is, RNA is formed in nucleus and then moved to specialized region in cytoplasm depending on the types of RNA formed. Second, the ribose sugar of RNA is more reactive than DNA and it is not stable in alkaline condition. RNA's larger helical group means it is more easily subject to attack by enzyme. Third, the RNA strands are continually met broken down and reused. Fourth, the RNA is more resistant to damage from UV light than DNA. Fifth, the rate of mutation of RNA is relatively high. Sixth, the rate of renaturation of the melting is quick. And lastly, the RNA is more versatile than DNA, capable of performing numerous diverse tasks in an organism. So after listening to the properties of RNA, do you know what are the types of RNA? There are three types of RNA present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, which are messenger RNA, mRNA, ribosomal RNA, rRNA, and transport RNA, tRNA. mRNA acts as intermediaries, which carries genetic information from one or a few genes to a ribosome in order to synthesize proteins. It plays an important role in the process of transcription and protein synthesis. Besides, RNA is one of the components of ribosome. It carries the fundamental role in synthesis and translation of mRNA into proteins. Moreover, tRNA acts as adapter molecules that translate the information of mRNA into specific proteins. It has the responsibility to choose the correct protein or amino acid that required by body, in turn helping the ribosomes. What are the functions of RNA? RNA is a nuclear acid messenger between DNA and ribosome. It serves as genetic materials in some organisms such as viruses. Besides, some RNA molecules play an active role within the cell by catalyzing biological reactions, controlling gene expressions, or sensing and communicating responses to cellular signals. Other than that, RNA molecules are able to adopt complex tertiary structures and act as biological catalysts. For example, RNA function as ribosomes, which are enzymes that comprise of RNA molecules rather than proteins during translation. It links amino acids during protein synthesis, as well as participating in RNA splicing, transfer RNA biosynthesis, and bioreplication. One of the first ribosomes that have been discovered was RNAs P, which are ribonucleides that compose of both RNA molecules and proteins. It generates tRNA from larger precursor RNAs.